It's spiritual. <laughs> Keep on going. But everything, everything, everything is spiritual. tonight briefly as we on here I told y'all to take a nap <laughs> some of y'all ain't listen to me <laughs> I told you to take a nap now nah, saints isn't it crazy that your home your home Wi-Fi don't work <laughs> like your phone data and that's a word <laughs> Listen, I'm giving you wisdom for life. Saints, I know that we talk about Wi-Fi. Saints, Wi-Fi don't work. <laughs> Listen. The data in the phone is way more effective. You no, know, because I you know I do videos. I do videos. I know Facebook, I know uh I know YouTube, I know um, Periscope. Listen, if you go live on your actual Wi-Fi, listen, I wish I could tell some of them African preachers. Because <laughs> they, they be real close up to the camera like this and tell them, listen, uh, <laughs> I see, I'm seeing, listen, I'm seeing in the rail. <laughs> Don't screenshot me. Leave me alone. Don't screenshot me. Some of y'all just screenshot me. Put your phone down. Don't screenshot me again. Don't do it. Don't do it again. I wish I could tell them that the reason why the signal be messing up is because there be a Wi-Fi issue that's going on. <laughs> there be a Wi-Fi issue that's going on. So, when you go live on Wi-Fi, it'll mess up your whole signal. Okay? So so that's just wisdom for that. All right? Let's go to Revelation chapter 
on a broad in your mind so that you can understand this this realm of glory this realm of supernatural increase let me tell you something daughter sometimes you messed up about a man because you ain't got no money I promise you there's a there's an anointing that comes on you when you got money all right and I want you to understand from a very pure place that I'm talking to you from. That's why when I cut niggas off my life, it, it don't affect me none. <laughs> no, I, I want you to understand. Can I be raw with you so so you can get to where get get to where you need to go? Let's just let's just have a talk here. Let's what I'm talking to you about is very powerful, but I I want to deal with this. There's a there's a spirit that comes when God gives you money. I'm not talking about when you sinning against God to get money. I'm saying when God pits the wealth anointing on you, there's an empowerment that you carry. There's a boldness and a confidence and there's a God characteristic about you to the degree that people will misunderstand you for what you represent. You understand and if people looking at you and they don't really know who you are, they'll start saying, oh, that person proud. Oh, they think they all that. No, no, no. You don't understand that God placed the mantle on them. And with that mantle comes that persona. <laughs> Saints, you, you know why I say I'm the king of Detroit? Because they had a petition for me not to get on the Word Network and I broke past all of their petitions and I got on the word network and I was live. <laughs> so therefore I'm the king of Detroit. <laughs> Cause when the king stood up, <laughs> I broke through that kingship. <laughs> so, so therefore I'm the king of New York. What if you're the only queen in your bloodline? What if? What if you're the only queen in your bloodline? Do you know that some woman, you're the only woman in your bloodline that uh, let Jesus take over? You Watch this here. What be crazy is sometimes your mother, your grandmothers, your aunties, they'll look down on you because they don't think, hey, you is the curse breaker. You are the queen. You are the Esther. They they won't see it. Natural people are not going to see who you are. But you don't give what is holy to dogs, nor cast your pearl among swine. So you don't waste your time, your time time. Oftentimes, the reason why you feel like you alone, because there's an anointing on you that God ain't pitting around, pitting on nobody around you. Listen. The abundance of people in your life does not remove loneliness. Loneliness can be the proof that you're carrying a particular grace that God hasn't given to anyone. Loneliness can be a revelation of your uniqueness. Because if God puts you in a stream and nobody else is there yet, God will give you confirmation. Loneliness is not always a bad place to be in. Saints, I became Prophet Joshua Holmes in loneliness. It was the times where I didn't have nothing to do that God was doing the most. It was the times where no one is there to talk to you that God is programming your spirit to hear his voice the most. What happened before Jesus was arrested? Loneliness. What happened before Joseph was lifted out of the pit and sold into slavery? Loneliness. In that pit, he was lonely. 
Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane said, y'all can't stay up and wait with me. Loneliness. In the midst of loneliness, the destiny of God is being birthed. So when you in your lonely place, you're in your godly place. Have you ever noticed that your loneliness is never scheduled? That's why most times you get tempted to reach out to folk. <laughs> Girl, what you doing? I'm just calling and check on you. No, nah, don't check on her. God don't want you to check on her. It sounds good. It sounds great. But you not supposed to. What you doing later on today? How are you doing? You don't want to go to school? You don't want to go to Mount Everest? <laughs> Saints, everybody that comes to your mind, you're not supposed to mind it. Do you know why people come before you? Do you know why you think about people? Sometimes you're thinking about somebody because they done fell away from Jesus. They don't want him no more. And Jesus not telling you to go pursue them. He's just letting you know. <laughs> Everything that happens to you. God already told you it's going to happen. You know, it's just a matter of how you dealt with your loneliness. In your loneliness is where the snake will talk to you the most. Snakes don't talk to people in a crowd. He talked to people that's isolated. <laughs> Do you know how many people said, I'm going to get away from everybody and go see God. And that's when they fell the greatest into the most deception ever. Because the snake talked to you the most. See, I'm just dealing with you with the versatility of loneliness. Think about that. The versatility of loneliness. There's many sides to it. You notice that, and, and Jesus said this to me and it was very powerful. And I want you to hear me and understand where I'm coming from here. That this is very powerful and it really shocked me. But at the same token, I, I can digest what the Lord was saying to me. King Jesus told me this. He said, son, you notice the serpent never messed with Adam. He said, let me give you the reason why. It wasn't just because he was a man. He said he didn't mess with Adam because Adam had a revelation of the seed. <laughs> I never heard this a day in my life. He said, son, I had taught Adam about the seed. Adam was in the process of teaching his wife about the seed, but she didn't. She she was not as classed as he was. That's why men are coverings for you. That's why I'm, I'm raising up my sons, the, the sons that God has given me. I'm raising them up to to honor God. So when they get their families. They can be bossing with their families and their wife could have things the way that's supposed to be. And it can be decent. But let me just tell you this. I don't, when I say sons, I don't really have a large margin of men on the earth that want to be men. Let me just tell you this. I truly believe and I know it to be true. I know the godly man ceases. I know that. I know that. I understand that very clearly. I haven't seen a male in the earth that, you know, with the full totality of just bam. Like everybody is like growing and growing and growing and growing. Which is nothing wrong with that. We are. We, that's a blessing. But. I'm not trying to get nobody hopes up. That's what I'm saying. Because I've seen many men fall. You understand? Especially men that, especially men that 
uh, I've seen many men fall. So I'm not really too impressed with the male gender. Understand where I'm coming from. My inspiration is more so into the females because um, that's what Jesus has anointed me. I have, I have, uh, I have two daughters that the Lord anointed me to bring into the earth realm. So even in my natural genes, I'm anointed for <laughs> baby girls. There's anointing that I have for girls. That's why I wrote a whole book on increasing your anointing as a virtuous woman. Because this whole book, this 200 pages is about women. It's not about men. The reason being because I, I found that a lot of men are insecure. A lot of men, they don't listen. They're very proud. They're in competition. A lot of men, they get around somebody like me. They get around greatness. They don't know how to handle it. They think, well, listen, listen, I'm going to take on what you do too. And it's like, <laughs> it's, it's just like, it's, 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 uh, it's pettiness. Some of you females, you used to having like having women jealous of you and stuff like that. But there's another realm as well. Men struggle with that too, which is not often spoken about. We often think about drama in the midst of women. But I've had many men that act like little pussies. All right. Some of you all, you, you act like you never heard that word before. Don't don't come on my line. Up there, act like you super saved, like you never heard that before. We in 2019, blessed be God. All right. Y'all saved, super saved, super saved. You act like you don't, you don't hear no words. You know what I mean. I mean that they leave their origin of functioning like a man and they act like a woman. They act like little girls. They don't want to handle life. They don't want to do what they're supposed to do to take care of their family and children, but they want to talk the talk. You understand? I'm talking about men like that. I'm talking about they got a big old mouth, but they don't got a big old impartation to their children, a big old impartation to, to their family. That's what I'm talking about. Bastards. I've met many bastards. I, I've, I've rarely met uh, classy men. Now I love my son Juan. Juan been with me for four years. I love my other sons as well. But I'm saying there is an epidemic for men. So some of you women right now, you won't be with a man. I'm going to just tell you, with that man sticking his thing in you and he not right with God is going to mess jack you up. So, so you better be happy that God got that nigga over to the side. You, you Listen, you might have a little lonely nights, all that stuff, but that's better than you having demons inside of you. I always say this, and this is just my raw anointing. It's a terrible thing for a, a godly woman to be married to an ungodly man. It's a terrible thing. Oh, it's a terrible thing. I made this statement last night, I believe. It is a curse for a woman to have more wisdom than the man that she with. That means that she got to lead him. She got to direct him. She got to correct him. She got to show him the way. That, oh, it's, it's burdensome. Because a woman wasn't created to do that. And yes, a woman can sanctify her husband. Apostle Paul said that, but Apostle Paul said that guessingly. If you read the text, Apostle Paul said, I'm just, I, I think that the spirit of God is with me. <laughs> When you hear preachers say that, <laughs> there's about 2% of incorrect information about to hit. No, saints, I'm serious. Apostle Paul went all the way in the text said, hey, women should wear a covering when they praying. A man shouldn't have his head covered. And then at the end of the text, he said, we don't practice these things, nor does the church of God. So the Muslims went go put the the big old sheet on their head and they up there Naji Rumba. Listen, they up there, they up in the cut like this here. Don't play with me. They up in the cut like this Naji Rumba, Naji Rumba, Naji Rumba, Naji Rumba, Naji Rumba, Naji Rumba. Naji Rumba, Naji. Because the text, the text said, 
Don't cover your head if you're a man. Cover your head if you're a woman. Then if you don't read the whole text, Apostle Paul finished off the whole doctrine by saying this. We don't practice this, nor does the churches of God. So here's the crazy thing. People be taking stuff out the Bible and make a whole doctrine. You, you heard? They ain't read the whole thing. Mess your whole, mess your whole philosophy up. That's why you gotta, you gotta, you gotta read line upon line, precept upon precept, because there's a continuation to everything. So some people they took the whole thing. So, so, yeah, that's what happened. Apostle Paul was guessing about marriage. He wasn't, he wasn't hitting nothing. <laughs> Apostle Paul wasn't getting nothing. <laughs> So he couldn't talk. <laughs> he couldn't talk from the place of experience. He would just, when he got to that realm, even he said it. I believe that the Spirit bears witness with me, and He's with me on this. <laughs> if a woman burns, let her get, you know. But Apostle Paul, he was given his opinion. Now his opinion is not like it's not going to lead you to hell. And. This is why I want you to understand the levels of God's wisdom. Because even Apostle Paul's opinions, God deemed them as legit for, 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 for us, for the people that it will pertain to. Saints, let me just give you a revelation. There can be 10 men of God in your city holding a, a conference. If they're not your man of God, you can sit in the conference and you can be in witchcraft off of their impartation. Because even though that doctrine may be given to them by God. If that's not the path that God is taking you. Everything that you're receiving is misleading you. All right. Let me give you an understanding here. David killed the Philistines, but he didn't kill Saul. He killed Goliath, but he didn't kill Nabal. Both of them was his enemies, but different reactions required from God. Different streams of instruction. So if David was listening to the doctrine, cut off your Goliath, slay Goliath. If he was listening to that song at the time, he would have went go slay Saul because Saul was his Goliath for that season that he was in. But Saul wasn't a Goliath that God wanted him to slay. Saul was a Goliath that he wanted him to play. So the Lord was using David to play Saul. So the Bible said David behaved wisely. Like Ronald Isley. How many of y'all used to watch Ronald? <laughs> I used to watch Ronald Isley. Listen, low key on the side. Because his videos used to be like movies. <laughs> used to slap the woman, bring her there, bring her there, then pick her back up, love her on her. Our Kelly would come out somewhere, came out out of the closet. The videos was like a whole thing. Now look at this here. Both were enemies, Saul and Goliath, but different doctrines from God of how to deal with that enemy. So here's the thing. If I'm hearing something that's telling me to kill my Goliath, but God is telling me behave wisely with this one. I can be hearing something that's godly, but if it's not from my man of God, it'll lead me down a path of having the wrong decisions, wrong reactions, wrong solutions to the situations that I'm going to face. That's why God knows how to pit Moses in your life. Uh, if you're the children of Israel, he know how to pit Elijah in your life. 
If you are Elisha, he know how to pit Gehazi in your life. If you are Elisha, he know how to pit Abraham in your life. If you lot, you understand? He know how to pit uh, Naomi in your life. If you Ruth, you see how he knows how to plant who with who. Now, here's why I want you to understand. And this will give a solution to you about your life. Some of you are. Why Jesus connected you to me. This, uh, this will give you a powerful solution. I want to give you this revelation that you probably never saw before. Ruth was assigned to submit to uh, Naomi. Not forever. Only for a time. Only for a time. Only for a time. Her ultimate connection was Boaz. Here's what happens oftentimes when you're God's woman, God's man. He'll let you be up underneath a ministry, a leadership, uh, be connected to stuff to get you to where Boaz is. Because Boaz represent the place where you're going to come out that field of hardship and you're trying to make stuff happen. You're trying to find the answer. You're trying to get understanding. You're trying to unlock favor on your life. And when you get with Boaz, is a revelation that the favor has come. It's a revelation that now the wisdom has come. The understanding has come. And now the money cometh. So oftentimes, that's what be going on. That's why... You, you may look at your life and say, well, how come I was with the pastor, but now I'm with Prophet Joshua Holmes and I'm getting all my answers, my questions answered. I'm getting all my, my, my curiosities. I'm getting it revealed because that person was fine in the permissive will of God to get you to where you are. But if you was going to live in the perfect will of God, you got to have the perfect connection. And that's where the Lord will link you to who is your eternal covenantal connection. The children of Israel were supposed to be in submission to Pharaoh until they surrendered all to God. Now Moses was able to take them underneath his authority. You notice Moses wasn't always over them. It wasn't until they groaned unto the Lord, which we know in the New Testament, groaning is a part of praying in the spirit. So until they got into the spirit, until they started praying in the spirit, then God sent them a spirit man that was going to lead them to uh, their promised land, their abundant life, and their eternal life because he was going to bring them into the land flowing with milk and honey and bring them into uh, eternal life in, in heaven because they was going to be uh, delivered by a prophet. Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. By a prophet was Israel brought out. By a prophet was Israel preserved. To be brought out means salvation, means deliverance. And to be preserved means that he protected their deliverance. So you understand the ministry of your divine prophet. They come to save you and they come to protect you in the salvation that you have, meaning that you don't go back to your old lifestyle, your old thoughts, your old ways, your old sins, your old connections, your old emotions, your old reactions to life, your old, your old way of handling, uh, uh, your old way of handling situations that pop up. Now you have help. You have help. You have help. You have help. And that's what Jesus would do. Your prophet is a revelation of how much Jesus loves you. If Jesus gives you a prophet and he assigns a prophet to you, it shows you that you have been picked. You have been chosen. You have grace on you. You have glory on you. And is is a is a is a showing off that God does with your life. So don't be surprised when there are seasons that God does to you like he did to Job and say, have you considered my daughter? 
and you up there talking about why is all this stuff happening to me? Why are people fighting me? Why are people coming against me? And you don't know that God is boasting about you. You in a season where he boasting about you. And so he telling the devil, look, even if you have people call her names, she's still going to be loyal to me. Even if you have people fight him, he's still going to be focused. Even if you have people come against her, she's still going to be submissive. And he talking about you. And when stuff pop off, you got to be careful that you don't betray the reference that God done made over you. You understand? Think about that. Don't betray the the the, the reference. You, you know, when you're about to get a job, when you're about to get a job and they give you references and they say, OK, who can speak on your behalf? Who can talk? something good about you to us to convince us that we should hire you. And saints, how many times does God call Satan and challenge him and say, if you do this and that and this to him and do this and that and this to her, they still not going to curse me and die. And you got to be careful that you don't end up cursing God. And start asking God dumb stuff. Why are you letting me go through this? Why I got to have this happen to me? I'm doing everything right. I'm doing everything right. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Don't let people like that talk over your drink. You ever went to a restaurant? Make sure you pitch your drink over to the far side so they don't spit in your drink. One time, it was a long time ago, we went to IHOP. There was a man up there. He, he, said, he said his name was Katrina, but his name was Katrina. It was Katrina, but he said, my name is Katrina, because he ain't had no teeth in the front. So you know when you ain't got no teeth in the front, you talk different. You, you pronounce your words different. Your tongue is heavier. So it block out some of the verbiage that's trying to come forth. So 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 his name was Katrina, but he said, my name is Katrina. Now he kept coming back to the table. Now I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was a male or female. God didn't even identify to it. I asked Jesus what it is. Jesus said, I don't know. Jesus, I thought that you knew what it was. Jesus said, listen, I ain't create that. I create some man. <laughs> <laughs> when they turn into something else, <laughs> and that's not my responsibility. I didn't create that. Uh, that's like you make a painting and somebody goes scribble up on your painting and say, what is this? No, I didn't paint that. I painted a flower. You went go scribble up on my, my painting. Now I look like some spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, that's your problem. You're going to have to fix that yourself. Now, Whoever they was, they kept coming back to the table. <laughs> All right. So Katrina, Katrina came back to the table. And when Katrina was saying in the back of my mind, I thought Katrina was telling us that, that she was in Katrina. Which is the hurricane that hit Louisiana, which she was telling us that she was in that hurricane. So she said, I lost everything and I went in Katrina. I lost everything in Katrina, and, and I got here, and this is how I'm working here. Now, the mystery to this day was what I was talking to. I still don't know what I was talking to that day. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, here's the crazy thing. Katrina kept coming back to the table. You know, people, people that... that why they be having people that mouth don't look right working at the front, <laughs> the front of the restaurants? Now you gotta pit them to the back player, cause they, <laughs> they <laughs> I'm joking around. I'm playing around. I'm playing around with you. I'm playing around with you. I'm playing around. Now I'm trolling. I'm not playing around with you. Pit that sucker in the back of it. Team like this is. If he if if you drive up to the front window, he open the window. No, you gotta get that sucker in the back. Don't pit him to represent the business, cause I'm about to drive off. <laughs> Hygiene is important. I'm about to eat this food. Nah, you can't be looking like 
whoop there was and whoop there it is and whoop there where it's about to be. You're going to have to look right. Be having the worst people. They be, they, you go up to the front window. You got a big appetite. You about to eat your Big Mac or something, shock attack or big and nasty. And all of a sudden you turn around. It's like 555. It's 555. How much you got on you? I need five more cents. And you try, you trying to block it out. <laughs> But they all up in there, and then they got the nerve to bend over the window. You got tinted windows. You roll your window right up. <laughs> you think a shark about to bite you. And then you look over at your watch. And it's 1159. <laughs> Let me show you this, saints. <clears throat> now, let's deal with this here. Um, in J Revelation chapter 21, verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain. Um, and showed me that great city. All right, this is a great city. It's very big. The holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone. Now, this is jury. So. Here's what I want you to catch. The new heaven, the, the new Jerusalem is going to be made out of jury. It's made out of gold, rose gold, all type of different jury, crystals, stones, diamonds. Listen, do you understand you living on a place that's full of diamonds? Everywhere you go is shining. Oh, my God. Saints, I'm telling you this so that you can get an idea of how Jesus be thinking. He's a flex master. He loves flexing. He's a show off. Jesus is cocky. He bold. He he boastful and he got all the right to be. He God. You understand? He full of swag, if you call it that. He full of the drip, if you call it that. And he full of lip. Because <laughs> he going to tell you how I tell I is. He going to... Listen, that's his mentality. So... Imagine when you get with Jesus and you got this false perception of what it is to be like Jesus. Because you think for it to be like Jesus, oh, I don't need that. So I, it's not for me to ever dream about that. No, no, no. The desire to have nice things is a divine desire. As a matter of fact, if you don't like nice things, you got demons inside of you. Yeah, demons of poverty. Huh? I ain't talking about if you went to the thrift store. If you love shopping at the thrift store, you got demons. I'm praying you get delivered. You got poverty demons. You up there wearing Uncle Shirley trench coat. That trench coat got spirits inside of it. Uncle Shirley never used to sleep good. She had sugar diabetes. You up there pinned on that trench coat. It's cold outside. You up there catching that same transference of sugar diabetes and can't sleep good. <laughs> God going to give you some clothes. If he clothed the lilies and the trees, he going to clothe you. You way more valuable than a tree. Jesus going to take care of you. Look, look at the mindset of Jesus. He got a place full of diamonds. 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 Listen. So you're going to be walking on streets of gold forever like Jesus. Now, here's the spectacular part about this. Jesus told us to pray your kingdom come. All right. We just got a revelation of what's in the kingdom. Your will be done. We just got a revelation of what he desires on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, 
So you can't tell me that being broke is holiness and not having money is godliness because if I just prayed for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is, okay, there's no poverty in heaven. There's no thrift store in heaven. There's no poverty mindset in heaven. Everybody thinks abundance. Everybody thinks rich. Everybody thinks in a splendor manner, a majestic manner, a glorious manner. Jesus told us to pray for it to happen down here like it's happening up there. Oh, Jesus. Why, why would Jesus pray that? Because that means that I have to be rich when the condition of heaven hit me from up there and it hit me down here. That means that I got to have diamonds. That means that I got to have a luxurious life. That means that I got to have peace all around me. I got to have joy all around me. I got to have angels ministering to me. I got to have manifestation after manifestation. I got to have all my desires fulfilled because he just told me to pray that whatever has happened up there, that it would happen down here. He just let you know that he prepared a heavenly life of pleasure, prosperity, and abundance to happen to you in this lifetime. Now let's 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 read on. Go to Job 36 verse 11 in your Bible. What you see? If you obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years and pleasures. If you obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Why would God have that in the Bible? What part of that do we not understand? This is the word of God. He just told us if you obey him and you serve him, you're going to spend your days in prosperity. That means when I'm obeying and serving the Lord, when I'm obeying and serving my man of God, I'm in the predicament to receive not only prosperity, but also for pleasure. So here's what this is telling me. When I'm obedient, every day is scheduled prosperity that I haven't walked in yet. Saints, how are this shocking? It's shocking. Every day God has fresh prosperity for my life. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Listen, man, listen. If you just listen to this good news, you gotta prosper. You you can't you can't listen to what I'm saying and not take on this mind of Christ. Every single day he got fresh prosperity that I haven't walked in. This is not prosperity from yesterday. This is not prosperity for tomorrow. This is not prosperity that my grandparents walked in and grandmothers walked. No, no. This is new, brand new, fresh prosperity. Spend my days in prosperity. It's a new prosperity every day. Every day God schedule new prosperity for you. That's why he told you don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about that. Listen, saints, you, you can't tell me nothing. Nobody on this earth can tell me nothing. I've been in hotel rooms.
where the Holy Spirit will say. This the last day you don't got no money to pay for today. But before 6 p.m., before they close the office, your rent going to be paid off for another week. And before the office was closed, my rent was paid off for another week. Time and time and time again. Time and time and time again. I remember being in Decatur, Georgia one time and in the midst of sowing, all of a sudden you look up in the air, you see the sun going down. You hear the devil trying to talk to you and say, what you going to do? You ain't got nothing to counteract this. You going to get pit out. I'll never forget the day in 2000. 2008, I'll never forget the day. Having a situation where the rent is not paid. The sun is going down. And as I looked at the sun, I heard the Lord say, the sun will not go down tonight before I deliver you. Just being a sower. Just honoring God with my money. Worshiping God with my money. I never told y'all this story where one evening after the Lord told me that it went all the way to about 9 p.m. The manager stayed over that night for some reason he was apprehended. He couldn't go nowhere. He normally would leave early. He couldn't go nowhere. He was still in the office. <laughs> I remember having my eyes set at the sun as it's going down and hearing the Lord tell me that. And by 9 p.m., the sun didn't go down. Still in the sky. I remember getting a call that money was sent to pay off for my room. And I paid the money off. The sun was still up till minutes after it went down. After all, my name is Joshua. <laughs> the sun stood still for the man of God in scriptures. But in that day, it stood still for me. That's why the provisional realm of Jesus is not a mystery to me. It may be a mystery to you. It's not a mystery to me. That's why I preached it so strong. I know what it can produce in your life if you stick with the word of the Lord concerning this. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know. Look at the state of this government. Look how everybody's starting to get nervous. Look how they're starting to get nervous. They're starting to get nervous because if the Lord don't build the house, those that build the house labor in vain. All right? 
If God don't build the house, those that build the house are laboring in vain. So when it all said and done, stuff start popping off. People don't got no blessed assurance. They don't know where they stand. They don't know if God is angry at them. They don't know what the end going to be. They don't know what's happening. So at the end of the day, they have to get fearful. Because that's their God. That system is their God. That's not your God. You have a Jehovah Jireh that is already loaded and strapped with divine provision. No young man. <laughs> He's strapped with divine favor. He already got everything set up for you to experience overflow in your life. He already got stuff set up for you to experience supernatural increase. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Verse nine, and I say unto you, make to your, oh, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 16, verse eight. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. And look what it said, verse eight, for the children of this world are in the, their generation wiser than the children of light. Now, this scripture is real controversial. It's real controversial because Jesus is saying that Satan's children are wiser than you. What would prompt Jesus to say this? We, watch this here. Watch this here. And I'm going to show you how to decipher scriptures and how to break them down and how to get revelation on it. I'm going to show you something right here. We know that Jesus not telling them, telling us that they wiser than us to sin against him because we all know that that's a foolish decision for us to sin against God. So we know that he not saying for them to be wicked. That's what's making them wiser for them to be proud is what's making them wiser for them to be disobedient is what's making them wiser. So what's making them wiser? It's not their sin, because we all know that sin is foolishness. It's not their wickedness, because we know wickedness is foolishness. So what's making them wiser than the children of light? Having that money. Having that money. You go look on Instagram. Go look on Instagram. Look at all the devil's children that flaunt money. Look at all the devil's children. And then we got these bobo shy looking Christians that ain't got no doggone money like being chapped lip and up there looking all ugly. And they think that that's holiness. So I'm being modest. That's what they think. Being broke. is being modest. And the children of Satan is masquerading in the appearance of of what the children of God should be. And, and watch. When the children of God get it. Are the children that say that they are of God. Say oh you look like the world. <laughs> when the children of God get the stuff. The same children that call themselves of God start saying, you look like the world. You look like the sinner. Stupid. The sinner got what was belonging to me, fool. If I got what you thought that they had, that, that's a revelation that I done conquered their system and I done beat them up. That means that I done, I done took back my stuff from one of the bald-headed demons that was up there spending it and living with it. It's 
saints. They don't think like that. They're retarded. So when somebody come out in the body of Christ, you get persecuted. That's why the Bible tell you that when you get the hundredfold, it's going to come with persecution. Because people are going to start telling you, oh, you dress like the Kardashians. Stupid! The Kardashians had my stuff defected. I done got the doggone look. That doggone mean that I done got back my inheritance. It's a revelation that I done took back what was rightfully mine. Saints. You go read in the Bible, you look like the world. It don't never say that in the Bible. But watch what Jesus just gave a report and said the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Because the people that call themselves children of light are the most dumbest species on the earth. They'll be broke and say it's the will of God and God is not with all this. Look, look at all these stupid preachers. Look at all the stupid preachers that come against prosperity. You fool, and then you ask for a seed. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> you just knock money. You just said, God don't want you to have no money. That, that, that about money. Then you ask for a seed. Stupid. You just told me to go against something. That now you're asking me to give to you. A child of God believing for a big house. Oh baby. Store up treasures in heaven. Stupid. The Bible say. If it's in heaven. Pray that it come on earth. So if I got the treasure in heaven. Why would I not. Receive the treasure. Become a manifest on the earth. Because that's. How I'm going to be fulfilling what Jesus told me to pray. You look at somebody. They look prosperous. They tell you, oh, God don't want all that stuff. He don't want all that stuff. Then we got a whole generation of people. That are broke. Screaming out Jesus, Jesus, and misrepresenting Jesus like Jesus is some bad father. And they call that holiness. They call that being saved. Meanwhile, there's money that the blood of Jesus paid for you to have. That Satan's children are possessing the money and mocking God in his face every day with the stuff that really belong to you. But you. Say no. But the blood of Jesus paid for you to have it. The blood of Jesus paid for you to inherit it. And when you don't inherit it, all of the devil's children are empowered to accomplish evil. When you were supposed to have the riches to accomplish good. Saints, how people do... How people do violence. How do gangs do violence? Even if you say they shot or stabbed somebody, somebody had to pay for the knife. Somebody had to pay for the gun. Somebody had to pay for the weapons. So what you have to see is it's very wicked if you don't want to be rich and you don't want to be wealthy 
because that means that the wealth that God has for you is going to be inherited by a demon, a demonic child, one of the children of Satan. And now Satan's children are going to have the empowerment to fulfill the will of Satan in the earth. How is that a divine thing when you choose to let the devil take a hold of the money that belonged to you so that he can empower his system to fulfill wickedness against God's system. You think about that. When I got a revelation of that, that's why I started sowing. Because I realized me being wealthy is not connected just to me is connected to the kingdom of God going forth with empowerment and sponsorship and the endowment that God wants it to have so that his kingdom would reign supreme, not only in word, but in deed that people could see the visibility of God's power on you by you looking good, by you living good. They can see the blessing on you instead of just hearing it or just discussing it, but they could watch it visibly and know that it is the Lord's doing. So look what he say right here. He said the children of this world are wiser. The children of this world are wiser. Jesus is telling us that they get in their house, they get in their stuff. While we choose to struggle unnecessarily. They living in abundance and all this stuff. And we, we, we not focused on that. Or oh, if God decide to give it to me or if he don't. I'm satisfied whatever he do. I'm just going to sit right here and wait on the Lord. And the Lord is going to come through for me. And he's going to make a way for me. I don't know how he's going to do it. I, I done seen my family. They, they went through poverty. They went through hardship. And he ain't going to let me go through this. And no type. No type of wisdom to obtain what God says is yours. No type of dream to have what God died for you to possess. No type of desire to possess what God says that he has given you the power to have. I've given you the power to get wealth. Now, let's go further in this. The children of this world are wiser than the children of light. That's a, that's, that's a, that's, that statement is embarrassing to any child of God. Let's go to verse nine. Look what it say here. It says that I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of unrighteous mammon. This scripture is a parable that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Wait a minute. What, what, what is that about? Wait a minute. What Jesus... Wait, Jesus just said two things that are very deep here. He said, when you fail, what type of failure Jesus is talking about? Do he mean sinning? No. When you fail, he's talking about when money ain't in your life. You don't got no money. He said, make friends with unrighteous men. Listen. This mean that God will use an unsaved man to give you a job, an unsaved woman to give you a job, an unsaved person to open up a door for you. What he's saying, stop annihilating the way 
I'm going to put money in your hands. He said, make friends with unrighteous mammon. Stop burning bridges with ungodly folk that God has in your financial equation. I ain't talking about your conversation realm. You know bad company corrupt good character. I'm talking about your financial realm. Meaning God put a boss in your life. You up there being bad to the boss. Oh, I don't want to work here no more. Yeah, I'm about to do it, boss man. But I got to go to the restroom. You being stupid. You ain't walking in no discernment. You know what's happening? The devil tricking you out of your financial friendship with unrighteous, unrighteous mammon. Meaning God saying keep the peace with wicked folk that I'm going to use to get money to you. He said, make friends with unrighteous mammon. For me to make friends with unrighteous mammon, there's going to be a child of Satan that God is going to use to transfer money to me. But I have to know how to be in a an approach of being a friend to that individual. Don't approach them like you are enemy. Oh, I don't stand for what you stand for. Ah, I don't want to do it. Just... Because when you fail, they'll receive you into everlasting habitations. Why did it say everlasting habitations? That's dealing with your livelihood, your living arrangements. How many times did you lose your house, lose your apartment, you had to stay with somebody? That's making friends with unrighteous mammon. How many times did your car break down and somebody pulled up and gave you a helping hand? Making friends with a righteous mammon. How many times you had an issue with your stove, your TV, your door, your window, and you knew somebody that could work for it for the low, and you called them up and you said, can you give me the cheapest price? I ain't got much money. They said, I'll do it for you. Friends with unrighteous mammon that's why you have to be wise in this life you ever seen them people they dish everybody and they broke they're stupid it's not like they too good or stuff like this it's just stupid because now they don't have no friends with unrighteous mammon so when they fail they completely end up at nothing because there's no friendship with unrighteous mammon there's nobody that could bail them out and receive them into eternal habitations. Saints, this is this one of the most powerful scriptures. I'm reading this tonight. This is something that Jesus said, and it was real powerful. The disciples didn't understand what Jesus was talking about. This was a real deep conversation. This was a real deep conversation. Well, what, what I'm sharing you tonight, I'm giving you the mystery of this, because this is real. This is a coded uh, these are coded statements that Jesus made. You understand? When he's talking about make to yourselves friends with unrighteous mammon, you would say, why would the Lord want me to make friend with unrighteous mammon? God is saying this money is coming from the hands of a wicked person, but this money is going to get to you. Listen, some of y'all was in relationship with a man. The man was wicked, right? But God got money to you. I ain't talking about no little five dollar. You know when God choke him and then he loose the twenties. 
men broke nowadays. This is niggas up there. They, you, you, you go get your nails done. You got to suck their toe and everything else. <laughs> yeah, some of y'all, you don't don't be flexing because any other man, you be up in slavery. That nigga buy you a Kit Kat. You got to rub his back for the next seven weeks. <laughs> he think that he did something mighty for you. Yeah. You up there thirsty after you done did it. He gave you a piece of, he gave you some of his Sprite. <laughs> you done drank a sip of his Sprite. He talks to now, girl, now, listen, now, dead girl, now. Now, listen, now, dead girl, now. You're going to have to take care of me for the rest of my, listen, you did it like this. You're going to have to do it like this for the next five weeks. You just took a sip of my Sprite now, dead girl. These brothers be really thinking that they're doing something spectacular. You be living with a brother. You know what happened? She said, go get us some milk. He ain't went yet. You say, why you ain't get the milk, baby? Now, come here, baby. I'm, I'm waiting on you. What you waiting on me for? You don't need me. I told you go get the milk about 30, 30 minutes ago. Baby, I'm waiting for you to give me the change, all right? I what we gonna buy the milk with? What we gonna buy the milk with? I'm waiting for you to give me the change. What you want me to do? You up there clipping them big old toenails. It done slap you in the eye. You got a patch in your eye. Your eye don't even look straight no more. Done messed up your pupil playing with them big old toenails. Pop! Boom! Your, 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 your great auntie inside there think that you caught the Holy Ghost. To oh! <laughs> she, she, she don't know that you done went back because they're about two... Two claws that just flew up out of nowhere just knocked you right. <laughs> look at look at Luke chapter sixteen. <laughs> don't have no flashbacks of you cutting no toenails now. Because some of y'all used to cut them toenails like he was a professional. <laughs> Look like he was doing the cha-cha slack. <laughs> was happier than a mug. Luke chapter 16, verse 8 and 9, let us know about the children of Satan being wiser than the children of God. Huh? And then the Bible let us know, Jesus said, make friends with unrighteous mammon so that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. Jesus is saying be careful not to make somebody an enemy that I may potentially use when your finances get jacked up. How am I going to speak to them now? Because they done hardened their heart because you done cussed them out. <laughs> you heard? How am I going to get them to do something for you now because you don't cuss them out. I'm talking about if you're in a position. Saints. When my finances failed. The Holy Spirit will give me wisdom of. Who to connect with. 
if I was foolish, I could cuss people out and say, hey, man, I'm a prophet of God, man. I ain't. Just make sure you don't put me underneath nothing. I ain't submitting to nobody now. All right. All right. All right. Money coming to me now. All right. All right. This minds anyway. Okay. All right, player. You gonna you gonna give it to me when I come around here. All right. Every time I come around the place, I bling bling. All right. You gonna do it to me. All right. I ain't playing with you. All right. You understand the blood of Jesus against you. The blood of Jesus against you. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus, Satan. In the name of Jesus, lose my money. Okay. Connect me to uh, Leroy and tell him that I'm ready uh, to work at seven a.m. tomorrow. All right. All right. I'm about to go get some sleep. All right. I'm about to go get some sleep. I'll be ready around when the bus come around six. All right, about about five, about five again. Yeah, gotta get my glasses fixed. About five. <laughs> you done cuss somebody out. That was a part of your financial equation. So now they don't even go tell Leroy nothing or Eldred nothing. They don't tell nobody nothing because. You done destroyed the friendship with a righteous mammon. Saints, I, I'm teaching this to you because it's so powerful. I'm not trying to hype you up. I want you to get an understanding because a good understanding what? Give it favor. You understand this? A good understanding give it favor. So I'm giving you understanding about this so that you could have favor in your life for now on. If you understand what I'm telling you here, you won't miss. Saints, let me tell you something. I've been involved with people that I knew was, 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 was a part of my financial equation. And when they were flex, I'll sit. If you are immature and you don't know much, you don't have a good understanding, when they flex, you'll flex too. But your flexing not going to bring you to nothing. You understand? The flexing going to make you feel good, but it's not going to produce good in your finances. It's just going to affect. Your whole income, your provision, your, 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 your scheduled money, the transference that God was going to give to you. What did Abigail do? David went go flex. She went go sit. She could have said what, nigga? <laughs> Me and neighbor got some choppers too. We could. She could have used the mentality of Nabal in that situation, but she didn't. She sat when he flexed. <laughs> Here's what she did. When he got high, she got low. What did David do? He took her to be his wife. After Nabal died, he took her to be his wife. She entered into another kingdom. Was living like a queen. But when he went high, she went low. I've learned to do that. When I have worked with ministries... Or let me just say this. I knew the protocol was not for me to go high. It was for me to go low. Going low mean I'm in a place where service is my focus. Submitting is my focus. Not warfare, not who likes me, 
not who talking about me. That's not going to help what my focus is supposed to be accomplishing. If it's going to interfere with what's going to affect my divine assignment, I'm not going to pay attention to it. That's what I'm going to cast down imaginations and high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So I never have a, I never had an issue financially with working or being involved with my financial connection. I never had an issue because listen, even as I got older, I began to see things in people that God began to talk to me and say, son, look at how they're doing and they need this person. They don't know that they're jeopardizing their friendship with a righteous man. man. So when I dealt with people, I would know how to go low when I'm dealing with them. So they would never be able to say on my part, hey, I didn't help them because... You know, he disrespectfully proud. He don't want to. No, no, no. They love doing it because they saw honor and humility and servanthood and submission. And saints, this is the wisdom of Jesus to get the wealth in your hands. Listen, anybody that's investing in you financially you shouldn't withhold nothing from them. Nothing. Not even your teeth in your mouth. If they ask you for your, listen, if they ask you for your teeth, give them your teeth. If you smile like, give them your teeth. If they ask you for your wig, they might even not even buy the wig. They might not even wear the wig. They might put the wig up on a stand just for a memorial. They might put the wig inside of a, a picture so that they can hang it up on the wall. Put it in a frame, Hall of Fame wig. What I'm Here's what I'm telling you. Keep friendship with a righteous mammon. Listen. You go work at your workplace, stop up there just doing your job. Have a nice attitude. Be nice, be generous. Exceed the personality of your workers. Don't just do your job. Your boss tell you to do something? Thank you, I'm on it. Your boss asks you a question that you don't know? I don't know. But I'll find out. You know, when I was with Dr. Mike Murdoch, Dr. Mike Murdoch is a very classy man. I, I felt I felt amazing seeing a lot of my qualities that I knew I had, like he he had it. In the form of mannerisms, in the form of approach. In the form of servanthood. Because the thing was, if you don't have an answer for something, find out the answer. Don't tell your boss, I don't know. 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 Excuse me, that's my psyche. <laughs> now, here's what you want to see. Every question is an opportunity to fulfill an assignment from God. Every question. When it's coming from your leader. It's an opportunity to fulfill an assignment from God. And it carries prosperity to it. Anytime you help your man of God, 
your money status increases on the earth. Every time you help your man of God, your money status increases on the earth. Your net worth go higher, 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 higher. God mark you. Let me ask you a question that you never heard before. If God told Abraham, I'll bless those that bless you. Does that mean that God was stalking those that was blessing Abraham? Does that mean that God was studying Abraham very closely to see who was going to honor him and be faithful to him and love him and pleasure him? And stand by him. God was looking. No, 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 no. Let's go to the word of God. If God said, I'll bless those that bless you. Obviously, God is going to be stalking Abraham to look to see who's going to bless him. Who's going to empower. Listen. To bless means to empower to prosper. So watch this. It means that somebody was going to empower Abraham to prosper. What could that mean? Also, they brought so much pleasure to, uh, pleasure to Abraham that he was inspired to do what God told him to do that would bring him prosperity. He was so happy, so he had energy to fulfill what God wanted him to complete. He was so enthusiastic that he had the wisdom flowing inside of him. There was no interruption. He didn't have no grief because, you know, grief will interrupt wisdom. I'm surprised that I was able to flow in wisdom in all the moments of grief in my life. <laughs> but I'm a God. <laughs> That's how gods do. I'm a God. So, 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 so when I get in the predicament. The predicament didn't get in me. When I get into the fire, the fire didn't get in me. I got into the storm, but the storm never got into me. Lack don't attack me, I attack lack. You a sower. When you a sower, you not being attacked by demons. You attacking demons. When you attacking demons, you got the power. You say what's going to go. You got the authority. You going after the devil. You not on no defense. You on the offense. And you can't be on the offense until you get offended, which is a higher realm of wisdom. Divine offense is when you get ticked off with the devil. It's a higher level of wisdom. Divine offense. That's where you get the word of uh, offense. You get that word from offended. Or the word offended, you get it from offense. Before you can be on the offense against demons, you got to be offended and say, nah, you ain't going to be doing me like how you did the generation past. You're not going to be up there having me up there messed up in my mind. Forget that. Shoot. I'm not the average woman, right? I'm not the average man. I'm not dominated by emotions and dominated by mentality and dominated by instinct and dominated by this and that and the other. I'm dominated by the Holy Spirit, full of the Holy Ghost, full of power of God, full of the wisdom of God, full of the joy of the Lord. I dominate my atmosphere. I rule what I think. I rule what I watch. I rule what I let in my gates. I don't let evil inside of me. No evil will reign inside of me. No sin will reign inside of me. No demon will reign inside of me. The Bible says Romans Romans chapter 6 verse 12 no sin shall have dominion over you for you not underneath the law you underneath grace 
And this is the same grace that you find in Acts chapter 4 that it said there was great grace and none of them lacked. That means that none of them was underneath any demonic activity. No spirit could stop them from having their money. No spirit could stop them from having their house. Stop them from having their car. Stop them from having their hair done. Stop them from having their makeup. Stop them from having their jewelry. Stop them from having their deliverance and debt cancellation. There was no demon that could stop them. But they was able to move in the seed. They was able to move in sowing. They was able to move in the word. And they was not like everybody else. They had a superior nature moving on the inside of them. Somebody shout glory. And saints, that's what God looking to pit on the inside of you in 2019. You're not supposed to have no slow results. We're not in that dispensation right now. Somebody, somebody touch your neighbor and say money moving. I'll bless those that bless you. Wait a doggone minute. So that just that just gave me a hint. That God is about to start studying Abraham's life to see who's going to bless him. Let me tell you something, daughter. Let me tell you something, son. The reason why God plants your man of God in your life is to see what you're going to do. He's not testing your man of God. Your man of God done proven. God ain't testing prophet Joshua. Oh, I'm the tester. <laughs> I done proved myself to Jesus that I ain't going nowhere. He ain't got to test me. He ain't got to find out. He ain't got to dig in his back pocket to see if I left him. Every single day, I'm all in for Jesus. He ain't got to check me. But he sent me to check you. Where you at with yours, huh? Where you at with yours, huh? Hammer, 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 mer, mer. Where you at with yours, huh? Call one eight seven. Where you at with yours? Where you at with yours, huh? God checking you. God wasn't testing no Abraham. He was testing to see who was going to bless Abraham. He said, I'll bless those that bless you. So now God is looking all around to see who going to discern that Abraham represent me, that Abraham is my soul. And whatever they do unto Abraham, they doing unto me. And whatever they do to Abraham can bring me pleasure or it can bring me wrath. Whatever. Do you understand that God was studying Abraham to see if there was going to be anybody that was going to live loyal, submitted, surrendered to Abraham? Saints, let me give you a secret. Remember the angel went, go tell Hagar, go submit to your master, uh, Hagar, uh, uh, Sarai, when she ran with Ishmael. And the angel of the Lord said, return back to the house and submit to her. Let me give you a revelation about this. Why did Hagar need to submit to uh, Sarai? Because all of them were submitted to Abraham. So God told Hagar, don't go nowhere. Because you think that it's going to affect Sarai, but it's really going to affect Abraham. Oh, Jesus. Listen, listen here, listen here. The angel was not just talking on Sarah's behalf. The angel was talking on Abraham's behalf because Abraham was over Sarah and over Hagar altogether. And Abraham was going to be affected by her departure. So the angel knew that this will bring a curse to Abraham, which is sorrow. Remember the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth what? No sorrow. So the angel went, go stop and say, no, go back and submit to 
Hagar because her submitting to Hagar was her submitting to Abraham and it was keeping the curse and the sorrow out of Abraham's life so that she could be blessed because I'll bless those that bless you. God had the covenant with Abraham. So he saved Hagar from making a bad move because she was about to curse her life. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm seeing something that's real shocking right now. Uh, oh, I'm seeing something right now. I'm seeing something. Mm. Uh oh. Uh oh. Mm. Oh, that's not good. Mm -mm. That's not good. That's not. Oh, look at this here. Look at this. Look at this. Saints. Yeah, that's not good, but this is good. This one is good. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Verse 11, and it came to pass when he had come near unto Egypt that he said unto Sarai, his wife, Behold, now thou art a fair woman to look upon. Let me give you another revelation. Didn't it Genesis chapter 11 said that the sons of God was looking upon the daughters of men because they were fair? So. Abraham was in the spirit realm and knew that the sons of God was targeting Sarah. That show you that your man of God will always know the demons that are fighting you, even when you don't know the demons that are fighting you. He knew the demons and he made her alert of the demons before they even... <laughs> This deep, ain't it? It's deep. You know how I roll. He's preparing her for an attack. Your man of God will always prepare you. So don't show up to the fight like you're a victim. Because Abraham always going to tell you. Watch this in verse 11. So Abraham had knowledge of the sons of God. He had knowledge that fallen angels love beautiful women. No, no, let me not say love beautiful women. Fallen angels target beautiful women. About five women say, I don't never get attacked by the devil because you're ugly. You look just like Bill Cosby. I'm playing around. <laughs> that doesn't look. Wake yourself up. Genesis chapter 12. <laughs> I'm about to throw a cold sandwich about five of y'all. <laughs> Money coming to me now. Genesis chapter 12. Oh, I felt the glory of God when I just did it. Jesus. Ooh, I shouldn't have did that just then because I feel like I ain't going to finish preaching. <laughs> understand what we what, what, what we what we done stepped into you, you understand this this glory of God that we done stepped into 
the glory weight of God on you for finances, for money. The same glory that evicted Satan out of the heavens through Michael and his angels. See, see, you got to understand the mystery of sowing is the, the seed is really Jesus revisiting hell all over again. Oh, I just got that. I just got that. I just got that from Jesus. The seed is really Jesus revisiting hell all over again. Because he going in the ground. The same way he died and went in the ground. Went under the earth. And dealt with those spirits. The seed is like Jesus revisiting hell all over again. To replay the defeat that was already done at the cross. To replay it. Think about that, saints, when you got something on replay. It already happened, but it's happening afresh according to demonstration. You're able to see it happening all over. It's on replay. It's a, listen, your seed sowing is a satanic reminder. That their authority has been broken off your money. That their authority has been broken off your house, your car, your materialistic blessings. When you are sower, ain't nothing can stop you from possessing your materials. It's going to come to you. The substance is going to come to you. You just got you just got to be someone that's not anxious because it's going to come to you at the time that God see fit for it to come. But you, when you are seed sower, substance is final. Remember what Jesus did as a seed? It is finished. That's what your seed say. My God. What? Every time you sow a seed, you telling every financial demon it is finished. Every debt, it is finished. Every delay, it is finished. Wow. Jesus, as the seed said, it is finished. So every time I sow money into my man of God, I'm saying it is finished. That's why you see in Ecclesiastes chapter 11 said, give a portion to seven. Remember, it is finished. Seven, give a portion to seven. It is finished. Now, saints, I want you to see this. Remember, Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise to that thief. Now, I'm going to shock you with this revelation. The man was a thief. Which mean that he was robbing God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Look at this. Look at this. Jesus tells the thief. You shall be with me in paradise. Here's what happens. When you receive the seed, my God, my God, because Jesus was the seed. When he received Jesus, he was receiving the seed principle. So now he no longer was in the place of being a thief. My God. <laughs> be because the seed mean that you ain't stealing from God no more. So when he received Jesus, Jesus represented the seed. So he was receiving the seed principle. He was originally a thief, but Jesus wiped away his thiefing record. And said, you shall be with me in paradise. That's the switch up that happens to you when you are sore. You leave the place of being crucified on your way to hellish experiences, to being forgiven, redeemed, 
and being positioned with Jesus in your own paradise on the old oh, kata korata. You end up in your own paradise on the earth. Your own heaven on earth, your own land flowing with milk and honey, your own place where you'll never be broke another day in your life. Money coming to me now. Say it, saints. Say it, saints. Poor, 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 poor. You never heard that before. You, you, you never heard that before in a day in your life. You never heard that before. Jesus, we often forget that he was surrounded by two thieves. What did Malachi tell us? Will a man rob God? Jesus was between two men. That were robbing God. And when one man receives Jesus, which means he receives the seed, he receives the seed principle and God's idea of sowing. Because remember, the father sold Jesus. So for him to receive Jesus, Jesus was the seed that the father sold. He was receiving the seed principle in his life. And now Jesus say, you ain't going to hell, boy. You ain't a thief no more. You shall be with me in paradise. That's how powerful the seed is. It'll cancel a season of chaos that was scheduled for you. Oh, my God. Sowing the seed, the seed that's sown will cancel tragedy that has already been marked out for your life. It'll cancel disasters that has already been scripted against you. It'll destroy the works of the devil around you. Oh, Jesus. My God. Oh, Jesus. This is wild to me. Saints. I remember Jesus telling me last year that he gave me the ministry of Apostle Paul and Prophet Elijah. One of my personal assistants his name, that's assisting me, his name is Timothy. While I'm on this line, Jesus just opened up my eyes. I never, I never saw it like this. If you remember, Apostle Paul had a Timothy. Saints, I'm about to preach something to you that you ain't never heard a day in your life because the angel of the Lord just stood before me. I'm seeing our ring. Makastuna kanto sepe kele sua. Rala kulianto lejo lohosia. Arenius just came to me with a scroll, handed me a scroll. I just ate the scroll. Makastua la casio. And in the scroll, I'm ministering to you off of. Wisdom becoming my sister, the angel of wisdom. This is deep. Shapa Sulo Osianto, Lejolo Hosia, Lejolo Hosia. That's my conversation with me and Arrhenius. We speak in that verbiage, but that verbiage carry different sentences, different phrases, and different. Uh, downloads. Angelic communication don't have the same communication that we say on the earth. Let me give you a secret. Have you ever told somebody to sit 
but you didn't really meant to tell them to sit down, but you was covering up something that you was really telling them, but you wanted the people that heard it to hear what you wanted them to hear. But you signaled to them like, hey, sit down. You saw, you saw that look right there? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. S sit down right now. Let your law hosia. Ya. Let your law hosia. Los sula asianto. Let's go to Genesis. I'm I'm here in the Makasio Kofia La Mandio Revia La Kapala Le Supuantie Epeke Rofo Fala Kuravasuo. Now in Genesis chapter twelve, look at this. Let's go to verse. 12, therefore it shall come to pass when the Egyptians shall see you, they shall say to you, this is his wife and they will kill me and they will save you alive. Look at verse 13. He said, say this, I pray thee, say this to them, thou art my sister. Mm. Saints, what I preach has never been preached a day on this earth. Jesus told me, giving me classified teachings. Let me... Saints, she became the functionality of the wisdom angel. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Saints, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. Saints, I'm about to blow your mind with this. My my angel Arrhenius just gave me this scroll. Makarapa sarava lejolohosia. Look at this. He tells her in verse thirteen. Tell them that thou art my sister. Oh Jesus. Oh saints, this is about, it about, it about to go up in here. Oh no no, too late, too late, too late, too late, too late. Too late, too late. It done, it done went up already. Oh, it done went up already. Oh, suck it, suck it now, now. Oh, suck it, suck it now, now. Oh, suck it, suck it now, now. It done went up. <laughs> oh, suck it, suck it now, now. It done went up already. <laughs> I just done went up already. Look at this. I'm about to show you something that you never saw a day in your life. Oh, Jesus. I'm about to show you something you ain't never see a day in your life. I'm about to show you something you never saw a day in your life. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm about to show you something. Now, remember what he just told her. He said, I want you to say that you are my sister. Okay? These were his words to his wife, which represent covenant. So, meaning she's in his life because of this covenant, which the angel of wisdom is in your life based upon the covenant. Oh, my God. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Jesus. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4. Now, let's go to Genesis chapter 12, verse 13. Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister. Oh, my God. Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4. Say unto wisdom. Thou art my sister. <laughs> uh, 
and call understanding thy kinswoman. Which is the same thing that Abraham just called her. He called her his sister, which is his kinswoman. What he pit her as wisdom and understanding, which the wisdom angel is a female angel, which you, which I've taught you. She's in the functionality of the female angel. So watch this here. I'm going to show you how she functions as the female angel of wisdom in this text. When he told her, say you are my sister. Watch what it's saying in Proverbs chapter 7 verse 4. Ah, oh my God. Remember I told you that all of the word got line upon line, precept upon precept. It got its cousin. It got its relative in the scripture. Look at this here. He said, say unto wisdom. That's the wisdom angel. Thou art my sister. What did he say in Genesis chapter uh, 12, verse 13? Say, thou art my sister. Okay, let's go to Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4. Say unto wisdom, thou art my sister. Okay, Genesis 13, verse Genesis 12, 13. Say, thou art my sister. Now, I'm going to show you how this is the angel of wisdom functioning because there's a functionality that the angel of wisdom has. Now, look at what Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20 says. The angel of wisdom leads in the way of righteousness. So it does things the way that God wants it to do, which shows you that what Abraham did was the way of righteousness. It was the way of righteousness for him to say that that was his sister. That was the wisdom of the serpent against the serpents that he was facing. And in the midst of the paths of judgment, how do I know that this is judgment? All right. Because the Bible even said that. The Lord, watch this here in Genesis chapter 12, verse 17. The Lord sent a plague unto Pharaoh in his house and great plagues because of Sarai, Abraham's wife. Oh, my God. Oh, 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 oh. Did you, did you just see that? Did you just see that? He said in the midst of the paths of judgment. So, so it just said when the angel of wisdom is beside your life. Oh my God. Oh my God. It said that it was going to bring judgment. Look what happened in Genesis chapter 12, verse 17. After they took Sarai to be their woman. Look what the Bible said. And the Lord plagued Pharaoh and his house and his house with great plagues because of Sarai. Abram's wife. Saints, it just revealed that Sarai is the wisdom. Ain't oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. It just revealed that oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. It just revealed that Sarai is in Proverbs 7:4. Is in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20. Oh, we're about to pull. Money! Come it to me now. Come on, saints, pull it. Ah! <laughs> now, look at this here. Look at this here. Look at this. Look at this here. Oh, my God. I'm about to show you something. The angel of the Lord is speaking to me. I'm about to show you something in the text. I'm about to show you something in the text. I'm hearing the angel of the Lord speak to me right now. I told you the angel just showed up. I told you the angel of the Lord showed up. I told you. Arrhenius came and handed me that scroll. Oh, my God. Making wisdom your sister. Oh, sick of Mufia. Meleshuala. Go to Isaiah 51, verse 1.
Wow. Oh, Jesus. Now, keep what I'm saying. Hide them in your heart so that you can flow with me so you don't miss this. Let's go to Isaiah 51 verse 2. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who gave your birth. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, why, why we see Sarah? Why do we see Sarah in Isaiah 51 verse 2? It says, look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. Who gave birth to you? Saying, are you catching this? We just dealt with the fact. Saints, look at this here. Look at look at this here. Look at this here. We already dealt with the fact that judgment hit through Sarai, because in uh, Genesis chapter uh, twelve, verse seventeen, it says the Lord plagued Pharaoh. All right. Now we need one more scripture to hit, so that we can identify that Sarah became. A portrait, a revelation of the angel of wisdom. Oh, Jesus. That's why Abram said, thou art my sister, which is the same thing that's in Proverbs chapter 7, verse 4. Say to wisdom, thou art my sister. Oh, Jesus. Look at this, saints. Let me show you this. We need one more identification. Let's go to verse 21, chapter 8, verse 21 in Proverbs. Look what the angel of wisdom does. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. Doesn't the Bible say love your wife as Christ loved the church? Okay. Look what the angel of wisdom just say here. That I may cause those that love me. Love me. To inherit substance. And I will fill their treasures. Oh, so this is the final qualification for us to really see if this is really the angel of wisdom at work beside of Abraham. Look at this. We done dealt with the plague, the judgment. We done dealt with the uh we done dealt with the way of righteousness. All right. Let's go to verse. Let's go to verse, uh, chapter, chapter 12, verse 13. And the princes also of Pharaoh saw her and commended her before Pharaoh. And the woman was taken into Pharaoh's house. Watch this here, verse 16. And he entreated Abraham, Abram very well for her sake. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh my God. No, 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 no. If, 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 if we fulfill this scripture is revealing that she really is the angel of wisdom in this text, that she, she fulfilling that part. She playing that part in this text. If, if, if we can unlock that she caused him to inherit substance. Oh, gee. no, no. Cause Proverbs chapter eight, verse 21 just said, that it will cause you to inherit substance and fill your treasures. Okay, let's go to verse 16 of chapter 12. And he entreated Abraham well for her sake. And Abraham had sheep and oxen and asses. 
Oh, he had some he asses. We ain't fooling with that. Let's just mark that one out because I ain't feeling it. And men servants, I ain't. Maid servants and she asses and camels. Look at this here. Wait a minute. He just increased. Wait a minute now, now. Wait a minute now, now. He just increased. Oh, Jesus. She just fulfilled that she would cause to inherit substance those that love her. Now, look at this here. Abraham, Abram just inherited all these things. Oh, my God. Saints, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Oh, Jesus. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This, this. Abram just inherited substance. Proverbs 7, verse 4, Solomon revealed to us that wisdom is a, f a female angel. Tell her that she is your sister. Abraham looks at Sarah and says, say that you are my sister. You are my angel of wisdom. That caused me to inherit substance. <laughs> you, you are my angel of wisdom that fills my treasures. Why? Because Abram is a sower. Now watch this here. Here's the, here's the, here's the icing on the cake. Genesis chapter 13. Look at verse two. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. This will happen when you sow in into your man of God. The angel of wisdom come in your life, cause you to inherit substance. Pitch you at the right place at the right time and bring the increase that's needed for your life to you. Here's the powerful thing about this. Saints, what I just did was unlock the scriptures to you to show you the reason why Abraham told her you are my sister is because he was prophesying what Solomon was going to be teaching in Proverbs chapter 7 verse 4. He was up there prophesying that the angel of wisdom is about to be revealed to the earth so that the children of God could inherit substance, so that they could have their treasures filled, so that they could have judgment hit their life. And judgment means that God is going to start sending plagues. He's going to start sending disconnections to your life. He's going to start removing bad people from your life. He's going to start clearing out your atmosphere from people that are snakes and that are not God sent to be a blessing to your life. So, and it was going to lead you in the path of righteousness. So you was going to live the way that God wanted you to live. It don't matter if people tell you that you satanic. It don't matter if people tell you that you wrong. You was going to live the way that God wanted you to live. No matter what they had to say about it. God was still was going to make you live that type of way. Even if they say that you got too much money. The righteousness of God, that's his way of living through you. You're going to live like that no matter what they got to say. It's not going to stop him from putting the money in your hand. It's not going to stop him from giving you brand new things. Because this angel comes to lead in the way of righteousness. Saints, now you understand the mystery of him telling us. It's your sister. This your sister. Now you understand the mystery. Why? All of a sudden, we see now Abraham is dealing with the fact, thou art my sister. Because Abraham has a sword and activated. He activated this angel of wisdom. And now all of his prosperity is going to another level. Now he inheriting the life that God want him to live. And now Genesis 13 comes on the scene and it's telling us that he's very rich and silver and gold. Saints, that's what's happening to us this year. That's what's taking place this year. 
the Lord is making your way prosperous and the angel of wisdom is coming on the scene to cause you to inherit substance, to bring judgment to your life so that wrong people won't enjoy the blessing. And as you're moving in this grace, I prophesy before this year is over, you're going to have the last laugh on every enemy. I already did. Ha, 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 ha.